Hey guys, welcome back to the Tukes and Tires YouTube channel. As always, I'm Zach and this week we're fixing up this vintage helmet I bought at an auction site and making up a custom liner for it. Hey, is that Timmy's? Yeah, because we're in Canada. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Tukes and Tires YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'm Zach. And this week, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. We're actually not in the shop. We're inside where it's warm because it's snowing outside. Uh, but I like collecting weird things. Uh, this might not be weird, you know, because it's just a helmet. But I got some pretty strange things I like to collect. But I like collecting old vintage helmets. But with that, obviously, they've seen better days. So I thought we'd do a video of actually restoring one in quotations, restoring. Basically, we're just gonna give this thing a buff on the outside, but the majority of this video, we're basically just going to concentrate on fixing the inside. Cause obviously um, that's what's wrong with a lot of these vintage helmets is that the insides deteriorated and this inside is really gross. So we're gonna go over how we're gonna tackle this today. Uh, we got some fabrics here. I'll probably throw a video on here of me actually in the fabric store explaining what type of fabric to buy so it's gonna play right now okay guys so i don't know if this is making it into the video but we're at lens mill store this is just our local fabric store and when i'm looking for a fabric for what i'm doing like with this helmet uh, i'm looking for something along these lines it's nice and stretchy but it's not too coarse so that way on my head it's not gonna hurt so we're gonna get some of this cut. I don't know how much it's gonna cost, but basically we'll just meet you back at home when we're sewing. And so you can see we've got this red fabric here and this is what we're gonna use for the majority of the inside of this helmet. And I'm gonna show you how we're going to make a pattern to sew this back together. Uh, we're gonna do something, a little trick because I thought it would just be fun. Uh, obviously because this is a really Canadian looking helmet uh, we're going to throw some maple leaves on the inside and nothing better to do that with than some fabric that has maple leaves and maple syrup on it. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, so pretty much you'd only need one type of fabric. Like I said in that video, we're buying something that's stretchy that will be able to form in the helmet nicely. Uh, this originally would have had about a quarter inch foam in the top of it for your head to touch in the inside. So... Also, while I was at the fabric store, I found this quarter inch foam. It's kind of got, I don't know what you'd call it or what it's for. I just thought it would work pretty good. Um, but it's got basically some type of felt, like it's not the foam directly. So this should work pretty good for gluing. Uh, we're gonna probably do all the gluing outside in the shop once I get all this made up. But we're just gonna use like contact cement, like the spray stuff, Super 77, if you know what I'm talking about. But how we're gonna start doing that is we're just gonna start by dissecting this old inside out of the helmet so we can start making a pattern from it. So we're just gonna, we're gonna dive in and just start ripping it out. So it's pretty well coming out already. Uh, then we'll be able to blow out all the junk that uh, is gonna come out off of it. This helmet's pretty neat. Uh, my dad says that he remembers them selling these helmets at Canadian Tire and actually does say Canadian Tire Corporation in it. It was made in Canada, so that's pretty wicked. Um, maybe towards the end of the video, I'll throw out like a couple of the other vintage helmets that I have. Well, my favorite ones anyways. Um, you can see that it, this comes apart fairly easy. Basically just in this edge, it's just tucked in there. Um, I'm probably gonna redo, I have another helmet that I want to redo that I did originally when I first bought like helmets and I didn't know what I was doing. So I added the foam in pretty weird. So this one's a pretty good representation of like how this foam should be in here to support your head. So it's just, I don't know, this is about a three eighths foam. I might need to be glued back down. So I'll probably just go mark a pencil line in here to show where this foam sat. Uh, these sides have seen better days from people obviously ripping on them while putting their helmet on, but that's okay. We're gonna glue to them anyways. Uh, but we'll get to that afterwards. So all we're gonna do is, is now that we have the old lining out of the helmet, um, I actually have a few of these because I've taken other helmets apart. I do have my favorite style of um, 
you know, innard to do. Uh, it's not a full one like this, it's a multi-part, but for this video we're just going to do this one right here. So all we're going to do is we're going to take a seam ripper and we're just going to go along and we're just literally going to rip all these stitches out and get it to a point where we can lay it flat. And then we'll be able to take this and use it as a pattern to transfer onto our other material. So I'm going to start by ripping these seams, probably going to put that on a time lapse of me getting this to a point where we need it to be. And then uh, I'll show you what I'm going to use to transfer it onto that fabric. Okay guys, so now that we have the inner, like the old inner all taken apart now, so you can kind of see how it went together. Uh, obviously you just want to make sure you remember which way it went in your helmet, where the seam was. Uh, the seam went to the back, so obviously the portion that would go on your forehead is solid. Uh, so you don't have a weird seam hitting your face right here. I'll probably end up going washing this in the sink just to try to straighten it out just a little bit better. I found that worked pretty good in the past for doing that. But once I get that done and I get this dry, then I'll show you guys how we're going to mark it onto our fabric that we got and we can start cutting our new innard skin. So here we go. All right, so we got it all washed up and I got it as flat as possible. Uh, you can see there's a burn hole in it for me trying to iron this thing. I don't know how to operate an iron, uh, but it should be good enough. And even if you did wreck one half, if they are symmetrical, so pretty much you could just figure out where half would be and then trace it. I've done that in the past when these linings have been really bad. Uh, but what we're going to use to trace this out onto the uh, fabric, I'm hoping that this is going to work. I use this when I do upholstery for like cars and stuff like that. Uh, it's called Taylor's Chalk. So pretty much uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to trace around this old liner with this Taylor's Chalk. And this is nice because what's with it, we don't have to worry about it leaving a line. So like if you were to use like a Sharpie, a black line or something like that, uh, you risk if you're going to sew this together or when you're going to when you are going to sew it together, seeing the black line uh, obviously this will rub off so we're just going to go around trace this line and then i just have these really sharp scissors so once i get that traced on there then we're gonna cut it out and then um, key thing is to uh, keep an eye on is how close they sewed to the edge so most of this they've actually sewn pretty tight uh, not leaving much extra. Obviously they probably sewed it and then they cut the extra off, but uh, I don't know. We're just gonna do it to the exactly the same way they did and then we're gonna try to sew it on the machine, but let's start tracing.
Okay, so that worked out pretty good. Uh, we're gonna be pretty delicate with this so that we don't uh, disturb the line. Uh, but these actually came in a couple different colors. Uh, so there's red, blue, and then this kind of white color. So now we're gonna obviously reveal this, but uh, let's see if I can get a corner here. So you can see that it left a really nice line there. So now we're gonna cut that out on that line and then, uh, you know, we'll be sewing, so. There you have it. Now we got our new liner all cut out. So now we're gonna probably go out to the sewing machine that's out in the cold. And we're gonna tell you how we're gonna start sewing this thing together. Okay guys, so we're out here in the shop now where our industrial machine is set up. Uh, you don't need an industrial machine to sew this type of stuff. Uh, this is actually very thin material. It's just, we don't have any other sewing machine that works other than this one. Uh, but <laughs> obviously what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to make sure your machine's all set up and you do a test pass on a piece that doesn't really matter. So I did this one and if we open this up, we can see that that stitch holds together really nicely. I don't know what I'm doing. So most important thing on this liner is you make sure you put it the right way. So this fabric only has one way you can put it. So this is the inside, this is the Nice smooth side, so on your face it's gonna feel nice when it's in the helmet. Uh, but what we're gonna do now is you have to sew it a certain way. So now I screwed it up, but pretty much when you look at this, if I can get it straight again, cold temperatures out here. I can see my breath, it's awful. But okay, all right, anyways, we'll lay it up flat. Come on. The fabric is so cold, it's curling. But, so this is the back side. So that's the side we're gonna wanna sew on. So the first seams that we're gonna do first is this one and this one, and this one and this one, and same on that, both sides. So that will start to pinch it together. And then we'll be able to lay it out flat. So like this. And then that whole seam is gonna wrap around like that. So then we'll sew the whole outside edge. So hopefully I can do this. Like I said, I honestly don't know what I'm doing, but it's all, it's all fun and games until you sew your fingers together. So now we're just gonna try to go as slow as possible here, working the fabric in. Like I said, this machine so, so a machine like this goes like crazy fast, so I gotta try to pedal it, like not so fast, but we'll do our best here. And we're just gonna try to, we're not gonna try to push it through, we're gonna let the machine grab it and we're just gonna try to steer it in. Did we do it? Not the greatest, not the greatest, but I could probably live with it. Third time's the charm. Oh yeah. 
So now, what we need to do is we need to sew the long seam. Oh, sorry. a little short on the one side but <laughs> overall I think I can live with it like I said we're gonna end up putting maple leafs over some of this anyways so I think that's awesome so pretty much now this would be ready to put into a helmet uh, you wouldn't have to go much further. Uh, you can see that I was a little short on one side than the other here. Uh, that's where uh, this is going to be awesome, where this is stretchy fabric. So obviously this just gets tucked into that lip anyways, and they usually allow a pretty big overhang. So I'm hoping that that's going to fit in there. We're going to line up the front and, you know, we'll just hope for the best for the rest. But uh, I think that's... That's successful for this. Obviously, I'm not an expert sewer, uh, so some of this might look a little jank, uh, but I mean, for the most part, it turned out pretty good. There's only like one spot here, right there, that's kind of funny where the fabric just got tucked on the wrong side, but that's just because I mutilated the backside. So now we're gonna bring this back inside and uh, we'll see about making up those maple leaves, maybe get a a few of them on here and uh, see about getting it into that helmet. Okay, so we just got done sewing up that liner out in the barn. Um, obviously this is an extra part that we're doing and you wouldn't have to go through all this work to make these. That liner would be perfectly fine to throw into a helmet, but we're just gonna try to go above and beyond. So obviously you see I got a fabric here, what we're using and I, We'll show you the steps basically. So here's the pattern that I made out and maple leaves are incredibly hard to draw symmetrical, but we managed to do that. And then we went from tracing. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see that there's like an inner line. And then I basically drew an outer line. So you can see that, you know, that's kind of going to be our fold line. And then this is the finished product that you can see on the back side that has a little edge folded over that's glued and all I used to glue it was this craft glue and then I just used a brush and we just went very lightly with the glue we kind of did one little line at a time folded it over held it until it kind of dried so now we have this nice crisp looking thing and I just used a lighter to burn the edges just to get rid of any burrs but now that we have these made up like this, we're gonna try to sew them and we're gonna hand sew them onto the back of the inner liner. That's gonna be pretty tricky. So I'm gonna probably do it and then tell you how it worked out. And then uh, we're gonna start by trying to glue some stuff into that helmet. So it's looking awesome. Okay, so we got the liner all made up and it's looking pretty sweet. Those maple leaves took me forever to sew them on there, but definitely worth it. Uh, I just have it laid in there just so I can see, get my head in the game for getting it glued in there. But what we're first going to do is we're going to fix up some of the foam that's in here. So you can see this stuff is like coming off. And then I sewed up, or I cut out a new pad for the top out of this stuff. I have no idea what this stuff is for, but that's what I'm using. It's got a nice fabric on either side. So we just made a liner to go in there. You see I did some relief cuts in it so it would fit down in there. We're going to blow this out and then we're going to be using, um, I think for all the foam bits, we're going to use this heavy duty contact cement spray or brush on stuff. 
And then we're gonna use that for the edges of the liner. And then for the rest of it, we're gonna spray the whole thing with this Super 77. That's worked for me in the past. So we're gonna get this all cleaned up and get it ready to glue the liner in. And then uh, we'll be throwing it in there. So here we go. Some people might be trying to figure out also how to determine the size of this pad that goes up for the top of your head. Uh, what I do, every manufacturer might be different for kind of their inner structure in these helmets, but there's usually, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, I've been sanding in here just to loosen up any debris that was in there, just using some sandpaper, but there's a line that's in here from like manufacturing process, I'm assuming, but I use that just to determine how big to make this thing, and then obviously once it goes in there, um, you know, you just kind of line it up, push it in, and then uh, glue it in. Uh, most of them usually would have had foam attached to the liner and the upper portion probably would have been in there loosely. Um, I just make it solid. I just think that's better. Also last probably longer, obviously because the old liner we took out was so deteriorated, there was no foam left in it. But I'm gonna clean this out, then we'll get gluing these foam edges back up and then we'll be, you know, actually throwing the liner in. Okay guys, so we're getting ready to glue this liner in. Uh, just thought we'd talk about it a little bit and uh, how I like to tackle this process. Uh, this is the most scariest part of this all uh, because obviously once you glue this in, most of the times there's not going back once you've like stuck it in place. So you kind of have to get it as perfect as possible. So what I like to do is the back's pretty simple because you have your seam coming up the back. So you can do a center line for where the back is, but the front's a little bit of a different story because it's an even strip up here. So I've just marked, you can see a faint pencil line on my fabric and I've put a pencil mark on the actual foam here. And uh, the best way I've found to do this is you wanna make it into kind of like a hammock shape. So you toss the ears into it and then you're gonna lower it. So pretty much you're gonna fold it like this and then you're gonna lower it down into place and then set it in there lightly once you've obviously sprayed it. And then we're gonna tuck the front and the back edge first. And uh, that's what it would have been originally, it would have been tucked in around this whole edge. So we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna use a hard piece of plastic. Uh, this is just something that I found laying around the house. And I'm gonna go and start pushing it into the edges to lock it in the front and the back. And then we're gonna do the center line. We're gonna get it to uh, stick to the bottom and then we're just gonna try to work it out from there. Uh, these wrap around onto the ears, but I always do that after with the contact cement. So you don't have to worry about it as much. So like I said, we're gonna be using this Super 77. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna spray both parts. I'm only gonna spray the inside of the helmet uh, that makes it a little bit better for trying to move it around. It still sticks like crazy. So we're going to do our best here and uh, try to get this in there. So let's wish me luck. This is what the inside of the helmet looks like anyways. Once we got that foam glued down in the bottom. So that should be good for the top of our head. And everything else we fixed up and trimmed. Because when they make these things, they just kind of run the foam in there wild. And I like to, uh, you know make it just to look a little nicer. We got it re-glued back to these ear pieces. So here we go. I'm telling you, this is the, this is the most scariest part right here. And you wanna make sure you do just like a nice gentle coat. We don't wanna go too heavy because it will soak through the fabric. So we're gonna just, that looks pretty good. We're just gonna try to do it as evenly as possible. It's kind of hard, but. Just feeling around to make sure that it's all coated nicely. Some of the spots are a little thicker than others. So we're just gonna go and we gotta let it sit and dry a little bit, but we don't wanna let it dry too much where the, the liner is not gonna stick. And we gotta make sure we clean our fingers so we don't get the uh, liner all looking bad. 
Yeah, I think we're we're pretty well ready for sticking. Whew, this is this is the nerve wracking part. <laughs> just sucks because we put all this work into this liner. So now I'm just gonna find my center points on both sides. I'm gonna pinch those. I'm gonna try to drop this in place loosely. Just like so. There we go, we got one side. This is basically where I bring it to, so you can still see, you can get in into the ear section. I don't know if you guys can see that, it's kind of hard to show. But you can still get into the ear section. We might end up putting just a little bit of contact cement on this stuff to try to form it into the ear better. And then you can see you got enough to material to wrap it around. We might have to do some relief cuts on this stuff so that it doesn't have a weird fold like that. But this is looking so far pretty slick. I'm gonna get this other side worked in there, but hopefully you guys can see what that's gonna look like once it's finished, but I'm digging it. Okay guys, so I think that's gonna be it for this helmet for this video. Uh, obviously, we're still gonna do a little bit of a buff on it. You guys are getting some beauty shots of it right now over me talking about this. Uh, the liner turned out pretty wicked. Obviously, it took a long time, and if we're going off of how long it took me, uh, the red portion of the liner only took me, I'd probably say maybe two to three hours to, you know, destruct the other one, cut it and sew it together. And obviously at that point it would have been ready to basically put into this helmet. Uh, but it took me a whole other, uh, I think it was like three days just making up the maple leaves and sewing them in there. I am no guru <laughs> when it comes to, to sewing. Uh, obviously, this would make a great gift for the time of year that we're doing this video at. It's at Christmas. This would make a great gift for a gearhead in your life. Uh, you know, vintage helmets are just the coolest and I think a lot of people appreciate them. Uh, they're one thing that you forget about when it, you know, it comes to car stuff, but you know, they look pretty wicked. Uh, we're gonna leave some of the battle scars on this helmet because obviously it, it's lived a life before me and I don't think it's right to take all that away from it. Um, I feel that way with a lot of my projects and cars if you follow along on the channel. Uh, they're allowed to have their battle scars because they did live a life before you. Uh, I thought we'd show you a couple of my other helmets that are some of my favorites in my first one. Uh, so obviously you saw the liner we made up for this. This is pretty traditional looking liner is what most helmets have. Uh, this is my first ever helmet I made up, uh, the liner. I actually, if you follow me on Instagram, I did a video uh, when I bought this of actually making up this liner, uh, since then I've got a little better at it <laughs> and I actually, holy Toledo, I actually want to tear this liner out and redo the foam because this one is awfully loose on your head compared to that one. Uh, but it's pretty wicked. I actually made the liner out of a shirt because at the time I'd, <laughs> I was too cheap to go buy fabric at the fabric store. And then this is one of my all-time favorite helmets. This is a 1973 Silver Bullet helmet. This is a Ski-Doo brand. Uh, so it would have came from a snowmobile. Uh, it's super wicked. It's got the Spaceman bubble shield. It's got the three-piece inner liner, which is one of my favorites. Uh, and for that, basically, it just has a top portion with foam. It's got a ring that's covered up that's separate. And then it's got like earpiece that connects to the back that is separate. Uh, that is the hardest liner to make and I'm still perfecting that. So maybe once I get it down pat, I'll make a video of me making up one of these style liners. But for now, those ones are the easiest. Uh, 
This helmet I got for a steal actually at a flea market. It was like 40 bucks and it's <laughs> worth a lot more than that. But uh, you know, you just get lucky sometimes. And a lot of these are actually fairly cheap. So I go on auction sites all the time. And there's like online auctions. And I'm pretty sure I paid, um, I know for that one I only paid 22 bucks. And I think that one was like 15. Obviously they're pretty junk on the inside and you have to fix them up. And that's why we're making this video to show you guys that it's not hard to restore some of these vintage helmets because I know guys out there love these just as much as I do and they're worth keeping around and not throwing out. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. If you guys have any comments, please leave them down in the description down below. Um, I'll do my best to answer them or hit me up on social media. Uh, but you guys are actually getting a glimpse of a project that's going to start the new year off. Uh, this is obviously become, coming out before then. Uh, before you get to see this project uh, But this car is super wicked. I think you guys are gonna really love it So sneak peek to you that stayed around to the end of this video uh, Obviously you can see there's a roll cage in there and this car has a wicked story So I'm super excited to get started on this thing uh, Obviously, I'm not finished any other projects, which is <laughs> a okay, but uh might as well just add more to the mix. But I think that's going to do it for now, guys. I really appreciate all you guys subscribing and watching. You guys are the best. But as always, don't forget to salute the beaver. And we'll catch you next time.